Hey everyone, welcome back! With the Ankles of Zeroman update, among all the new arcanes and gear, we have received two new Incarnon weapons. These are the Erodem Daggers and the Felarx Shotgun. We'll be looking at the melee today, breaking down the Incarnon Evolution perk trees, builds for it, and where it sits in the current meta. As the original Zeromon update has been out for quite a while now, I expect Incarnon weapons to no longer be a completely new concept to you. Otherwise, I would strongly recommend completing the Angels of Zeromon quest first before watching this video. The Enodem can only be attained from Caviero. The blueprint is tradable though, if you don't want to go through the grind yourself, but you will still have to craft it. It costs 5 Void Plume Pinions and 10 Void Plume Quills. Pinions come from Dormant Angels, but also know that there are no ways anymore to double pinion drops from them. As of a patch a few weeks ago, I normally run Halico Perimeter for Dormant Angel spawn since it's an easy extermination mission you can't fail, while your team can also search for the elusive Void Plume Crest at the same time if you still need it for ranking up in the Syndicate. If you need Void Plume Quills, they both drop from ravenous Void Angels from Bounty Objectives as a bonus reward from Bounties themselves, which you can check at the top right while selecting Bounties, and from Melika, the resident Zeramon Cephalon. The Melika route is done by inserting Zeramon Accolades, or Keys as we like to call them. The Keys always spawn within 100 meters of her, and have an audible hum when you get close, similar to Caches. Take your pick, as there are no ways around crafting it yourself, since only the BP is tradable. And Shroddy Lanthorns are an uncommon drop from certain bounties, rare drops from ordinary storage containers on the Zeramon tile set, and very rarely from Thrax units. If you are going the Thrax farm route, I would recommend Void Cascade due to the guaranteed spawn for every Exilizer on top of the random Thrax spawns. As our second Incarnon melee, the Enodem has somewhat similar evolution tree perks to the Prados, but still sets itself apart. At each stage, you can pick one of the three perks and can freely switch between them at Caviero if you don't like your choices. Always finish all the challenges because all five weapons change drastically in playstyle upon reaching Evolution 5. So how do you know which Evolution Tree perks to pick for the dagger? That's what we're looking at today, so pay attention. Evolution 1 is the basic, you are now allowed to use Incarnon mode. Basically, reach 5 times combo and heavy attack to activate it. You will know when you have enough combo because the meter will shimmer with void energy. The Incarnon mode grants 3 meters extra range, notably the Prados only grants 2 meters. This is probably to make up for the dagger having only 1.8 meter base range, and the Incarnon mode also increases attack speed by supposedly 40%. It honestly doesn't feel like that, and this one I'm just citing from the wiki. It feels more like 20%, but regardless, there is a slightly noticeable attack speed increase on the animations. Finisher attacks while in Incarnon form also granted an Incarnon Resilience buff stack that grants 10% global damage resistance up to 4 stacks. It interacts multiplicatively with other sources of damage reduction. They do not decay and are permanent so long as you are in Incarnon mode. But Incarnon mode itself only lasts 90 seconds and cannot be refreshed even if you heavy attack while above the 5x combo threshold. Personally using 4 finishers every 90 seconds is only really practical for a hybrid 12x heavy attack setup to maintain 90% a combo efficiency due to one of the evolution perks. And most people don't like running 12x heavy setups. Their main use is for endurance content which ironically is the same kind of content where your armor scaling no longer matters since enemies will one shot your health regardless. So I have mixed opinions on the armor passive, but if you are willing to use finishers on a dagger build at base steel path content, then you will get some survivability utility from this dagger as well, let's look at the other evolutions. Evolution 2 has 30% sprint speed. The problem with this node is that Prados exists. If you're intending to use this weapon as a mobility stat stick, Prados does a much better job. Although Prados is only 20% sprint speed, it also grants 20% slide, and also has plus 30% parkour velocity, which is a perk that's completely missing in general from Anodem's entire evolution tree. While sprint speed is still useful in a vacuum, even not as a mobility stat stick, Let's take a closer look at the Enodem. This dagger has base 0.75 attack speed, and the middle perk for Evolution 2 grants 25% attack speed. There isn't really a justification for this because it has very average stats, 22% crit and status splits, a typical 2.0 crit multiplier, and only 50% slash. 50% slash is very viable, but at the same time it isn't anything to write home about. It's just a generic slash melee with very average stats. The base damage though is pretty high at 360, but this isn't enough to justify the 0.75 attack speed. For comparison, we have a Keras Prime with 0.667 attack speed. 
Keras noticeably has 2.2 meter base range instead of Inodem's 1.8. It has 2% more crit and 0.2 more crit multiplier, which are small things, but they do start to add up. And it also has 30% status instead of Inodem's 22. It also even has Toxin built into it, and while Karist is only 29.7% slash weight, remember that all dagger stances have relatively high normalized damage combos as well as 4 slash procs built into them. This makes Karis lethal against corpus units and still bleeds quite well against armored units without having to add any extra elemental mods or building for more slash, due to all daggers generally sharing that absurd 0.9 follow through stat, which is the biggest, not exactly a weakness, but specifically differentiates top tier daggers from top tier tonfas, like the Cronin Prime. This actually makes dagger builds with absurd range viable, since while Cronin can actually build range, it does suffer if you slot both Prime Reach and Spring Loaded since it wants both more crit and also attack speed as well on an already bloated build. Daggers essentially bleed out many enemies at once faster than Tonfas, whereas Tonfas have higher single target DPS. But there are also heavy attack dagger builds, which are insane in general, which I will get into later. Karis also grants 10% movement speed, read not sprint speed, but all movement speed just when you have it equipped. So with all of these things in mind, it doesn't really make sense why Enodem has 0.75 attack speed. My explanation for this is simple. DE appears to have balanced these new Incarnon weapon stats around assuming evolution perks already in play, so instead of making Enodem comparable to good daggers as is, it was instead considered with full evolution trees active, which contrasts with the design philosophy of Latum and Fenmore, and to a certain extent Prados, both of which were already top tier weapons before considering their evolution trees that put them over the top. Let me make this clear, I'm not complaining that the Enodem isn't strong enough, rather it's actually really strong, but Fenmore and Latum are the poster child Incarnon weapons, and quite frankly I do find them slightly overpowered. It seems they retroactively nerfed the attack speed on Enodem to justify adding an attack speed perk on Evolution 2, to quote unquote balance out the weapon relative to non-Incarnon melees. They could have just as easily built a 25% attack speed into Enodem itself for 0.9 attack speed normalized. Daggers are decently fast in general, so while 0.75 is still usable, it just doesn't make sense compared to other daggers based on its stats. And now instead of adding a power creep perk for Evolution 2, they could have given it more utility perks are just something fun, which is what made the Prados so good. You can sum up the Enodem as being a slightly stronger Prados that at the same time is much more boring to use. This is reflected in the standard build breakdowns I will show you. There are only 3 builds today instead of Prados as 4 and they are much more similar in mod choice as well. They do still play differently, but these design decisions stifle build creativity on the Enodem in my opinion. The last Evolution 2 perk grants 0.5 range, which honestly is useless. This basically means Evolution 2 is wasted to fix a weapon fault that never should have been there to start with. Now, how about for Evolution 3? Unfortunately, none of these perks are really useful. The leftmost perk grants 5 combo for sliding 10 meters. The thing is, if you're sliding, you're probably slide attacking. Prime Reach combined with the extra 3 meters from Incarnon mode grants Anadem 7.8 meter range. Spinning around on a 7.8 meter range weapon will build combo infinitely faster from hitting enemies than getting 5 combo for sliding 10 meters. And if you're just sliding around to build up combo without enemies, what are you doing? I understand sometimes there are really rare niche applications for stuff like this, since Eidolon hunting itself is filled with niche strats, but I don't think main weapon perks should have things like this, especially if DE appears to be balancing the weapon with the evolution's active in mind. This is what we call a useless perk. The middle perk increases aerial melee attack range by 0.5 meters, which is also useless for a reason I will explain later when showcasing build performance. There really is no reason to use this. Then our last perk is the one I picked, plus 60% finisher damage. Now this is only useful if you're trying to use the resilience damage reduction stats, however 40% damage reduction is rarely useful alone. And conventional damage reduction strats like Neja's Halo already grants enough damage reduction and we also have mods like Adaptation available. The other situation is if you're using a hybrid heavy build which needs finishers for the Evolution 5 perk to maintain 90% heavy efficiency. Nevertheless, even if not universally useful, this is a perk that will see actual use in normal gameplay loops. So we have a dead Evolution 2 tree, and a mildly useful Evolution 3 tree. This leaves us with only the final two evolutions that actually impact the weapon significantly. This is why I said the weapon is boring compared to Prados. Evolution 4 is where things start to get more interesting. Our first option is an early Incarnon mode that only requires 3x combo instead of 5, or 40 hits instead of 8. 
The problem is, daggers really want to slot range, and all the builds I show you today will either have 7.8 or 9.8 meter range, which is honestly the highest of any weapon in the game currently, outside of very gimmicky things like blade whip stances, meaning you won't have any difficulty building combo at all on the Anoda. Therefore, while this is a nice option, I really don't think it is worth the perk since you can build to 80 combo and undem in literal seconds. However, if you're playing a normal star chart, you may want to consider this no due to the reduced enemy spawns and the overwhelming damage on a .9 follow through dagger one shotting everything it touches. This will let you access that plus 3 meter range of the Incarna mode much more easily on Star Chart. Steel Path won't use this note though, because you won't one shot enemies at zero combo and much more enemies spawn in. The rightmost node grants 20 combos on finishers. There's literally no reason to use finishers in normal star chart, only on steel path. And if you're able to finisher an enemy on steel path, there are also enough enemies nearby that if you swung your dagger once, you would most likely build 20 combo as well. So this is once again another useless perk. The main perk I'm picking is Swooping Lunge. This adds base damage based on stacks. Sweeping Lunge adds 50% melee damage for 10 seconds for every airborne melee kill up to 3 stacks, and it's infinitely refreshable. So it grants 150% base damage total, which is equivalent to 2 statuses from Condition Overload. It is additive to all other base damage, but it is still a free 150%. The stacks decay one by one, meaning it is very easy to maintain them, but let's look at it closer. Airborne melee kills does not mean kills with aerial melee. It actually just means kills while you are airborne. So aerial dagger melee is slower than normal attacks, has worse multipliers, and is just annoying to use. You can actually spam normal attacks to proc slash, and then jump in the air to aim glide for a second. So long as they die while you're in the air, whether it's raw damage or dots like slash, no matter how you DPS them with the dagger, it will grant you a stack. Also, some abilities and their dots occasionally seem to proc stacks when you're in the air, but that part is probably a bug because I can't do it consistently, so don't rely on that. With insane range and a point on follow through stat, you can easily swing into the crowd a few times on steel path and then just hop in the air to instantly max out your stacks as they bleed out. This free 150% damage combined with a high base damage actually makes Anadem viable as a raw corrosive weapon on base steel path even without a primer, which is something Prados and Cronin struggled with to maintain good kills per minute. This is because Anadem has well over 1.5 times more base damage than both Tonfas, while also having a free 150% base damage from the Swooping Lunge perk. A raw damage build usually only has Prime Pressure Point, and you slot Arcane Strike instead of Arcane Fury on the frame, meaning Anadem would have 415% base damage scaling, whereas the Tonfas would only have 265% on a pure corrosive build. Basically, Anadem hits for about 1.5 times harder than both Kratos and Cronin Prime on a corrosive build without primers. While Silver now casts as an amazing stance with Force Slash, Daggers have multiple good stances, specifically Pointed Wind that also has Force Bleeds, a very high normalized damage per second and full of horizontal swings to make the most out of the 9.8 meter range and .9 follow through stats. Evolution 5. Collecting ammo grants 5 melee combo counter. Just like the Prados, this only increases Anadem's counter. It does not increase the combo of exalted melees when you pick up ammo. Therefore, this cannot be used as an exalted combo utility. The absurd range on the dagger also makes building combo on it a joke, so this is a dead perk in my eyes. Stunning Brutality actually only inflicts a stagger animation on enemies. It only has a 10 meter radius, and you cannot trigger it again by finishing the same enemy twice. It also doesn't stun enemies when you're invisible, because for some reason this ability requires enemies to be aware of your presence, so it will not open up more enemies to finishers in that case. It will only open up to finishers if you are not invisible. It also does not stop heavy units from using abilities like the Heavy Gunner Ground Slam. It also does not affect Eximus units. Basically, it does very, very little that is useful. The stun is not long enough to be useful unless you spam chain on different enemies and doesn't have enough range to stun all the enemies that could shoot you to start with. I went with Blood Anointed, which grants us 40% heavy efficiency for 40 seconds after doing a finisher. This gives you the option to use heavy attacks with a completely draining combo even on a light attack build if you want to build a 40% damage reduction stacks. I don't know, maybe use this on an Acolyte if it spawns in. But more importantly, on the hybrid heavy build, you need this perk to reach 90% heavy efficiency with Reflex Coil if you don't want to waste a slot on Focus Energy. It suits very well with the naturally proccing the armor buff on a heavy setup, but once again, you only use heavy dagger spam builds in Endurance. Which is where armor is useless, since even though heavy dagger builds are extremely good, they are much clunkier than spamming light attacks on daggers, which do so much damage, it rips apart base steel path enemies regardless. 
as you can see, much less diversity in evolution perk options compared to Prados, with useless perks and even entirely useless evolution levels. But that doesn't mean the weapon itself is bad. I just see it as wasted potential in making the weapon interesting instead of boring. In fact, this is probably one of the strongest melees in the game right now, damage and kills wise. There's one last thing about this weapon though. The Incarnate form allows you to throw void waves at enemies when you aerial melee. It's used the same way as Contagion. Aim glide throw if you aren't familiar with how it's done. The problem is the projectile deals 360 radiation damage. I was somehow able to get a few other IPS procs on it, but simply put, it struggles to proc slash and does not benefit from any stance multipliers. Since the majority of combos average out to about 200%-ish hit multipliers per strike, this makes the aerial waves not only objectively weaker by about 2 times than a normal hit, but it also sucks at proccing relevant status effects for DPS. It also has 23 meter-ish range and infinite body punch through, but that's not enough to save it. It will kill things on normal star chart, but forget about using on steel path. You'd be lucky to kill anything with it besides spamming it low armor fodder units. Alright, let's take a look at those builds, shall we? The one condition I have is on every melee focus loadout, I will always be using Arcane Strike on my frame. So keep in mind those benchmarks and builds assume it is present. First up is that basic Rosa build, which is actually usable on base steel paths without a primer, having nearly 2.5 times the DPS of Prados and Cronin, due to the much higher base damage and the 150% base damage evolution for perk. Of course, it will shred even harder with a primer potentially one-shotting most fodder units on base steel path. That would just be a simple mon swap of prime pressure point for condition overload. But I wanted to highlight this weapon actually being viable without CO. Slash weight and stance bleeds are mostly irrelevant on a corrosive setup if the weapon is strong enough because you'll one-shot them, and massive base damage with the 150% passive and the 774.2% normalized damage per second on the neutral melee attack of the pointed wind is more than enough. This also means we don't need to slot weeping wounds since I chose to completely abandon build building around Slash here, so it opens up another slot for Spring Loaded Blade, resulting in a 9.8 meter range dagger and then card on form. Like I've said before, stack and range is super OP on daggers due to the point 0.9 follow through stats, and the incarnate form granting attack speed combined with arcane strike is enough that I could actually skip slotting attack speed on the weapon, similar to the Prados. However, if you're willing to give up some damage, you can drop the prime bane, which is slightly less important on a raw damage build, for primed fury, and all of a sudden you have a lightning fast melee that feels extremely fluid to use with the wide sweeping arcs of pointed wind. Melees also get an edge on corrosive builds compared to guns outside of shotguns because we use primed toxin mods here. At 12x combo, the Inodem reaches 118.8% crit chance, which is enough to guarantee those massive crits. If you choose to drop Spring Loaded Blade for Gladiator Mites, the crit spikes to 143% instead at 12x combo, meaning you will get a pretty even split of oranges and yellows while boosting the crit multiplier further to 5x for a massive DPS increase. 7.8 meters is still very respectable range. On a raw damage build like this, Gladiator Might is only slightly worse than a primed Bane mod, but is superior to a normal Bane, so take your pick. You may also be wondering what is the performance of a raw Krosa build if I actually use a primer. Sure, yeah, I just replace this for CO like I said and then pick whatever primer you want. The absurd range of Venendim honestly much prefers an Epitaph over Kuba Nukor since it may not prime all the enemies your dagger can hit in time. But this is a basic viral radiation Epitaph that also procs Cold End Blasts, good for CCing enemies, making them shoot each other, and also massively increasing your damage, both through the viral status multiplier and at least 4 status effects present for minimum 320% base damage scaling from Condition Overload. We also have two Augur mods on here for the set bonus for aiding shield gating strats on whatever frame you're running. Primers are very simple to use and always result in higher KPM than just using pure melee because of the massively improved TTK, an instant swap capability between melees and primers with no holster taunt. But do know that both setups work because Anadem is strong enough to forego primers completely on base steel path, which is something Prados and even Cronin Prime struggled with unless you relied on frame buffs. Another important suggestion is to run dexterity weapon arcanes on both your primary and secondary if you're going for a melee focused build, because this will grant 15 seconds extra combo duration to Anadem, letting you comfortably sit at 20 seconds, alongside Neramon's power spike to only decay by 5 if the bar runs out. Since we aren't using our primary, you'd also just pick anything that can equip Amalgam Serration, which grants 25% sprint speed already and makes the optional sprint speed perk on Anadem even more useless. But what if we want a build that scales into endurance? 
Well, that's easy. You already know it's gonna be a slash build. The most important part of any dot build is you must equip the Prime Bane if you want optimal performance for endurance. Banes in general double dip on dots, meaning this Prime Smite will multiply my bleeds by 2.4 times, or it kills all enemies 2.4 times faster, which is vital for reducing the number of enemies alive shooting you in endurance. It's honestly probably the most important mod on the entire build, after CO and Blood Rush and Weeping, which are generally accepted staples on any build. This time we do have Gladiator Might and combined with Blood Rush pushes to 143 crit chance like I mentioned earlier. Weeping Wounds pushes Anadem to 118% status and since the weapon is 50% slash you will proc slash about every other hit. Except Dagger Stance combos consist of flurry of multiple strikes per button press meaning you will still proc a ton of slash regardless. Anadem is so strong that despite being 50% slash which is the golden standard for the perfect Karnas manable candidate I actually chose to skip it since this weapon doesn't need more damage. And the only mod I could even replace is Gladiator Might or Spring Loaded Blade. It's objectively worse than Gladiator Might, and Spring Loaded Blade brings massive quality of life for the 9.8 meter range. You would still use the same primers as shown earlier, such as the Epitaph or Nucor. I don't think I really need to explain what a pure slash anadem can do with primers since you saw what Krosiv could do, which has to actually deal with armor. The footage here should be more than enough to speak for itself. The final build is a hybrid light heavy build that occasionally uses finishers every 40 seconds to refresh the Evolution 5 perk that grants 40% heavy efficiency. Combining this with Reflex Coil gives Anadem 90% heavy efficiency, meaning even swinging a 12x combo will only drop you from 220 to 198, something a few simple swings can fix with this 7.8 meter range build. If you doubt the power of dagger heavy builds and furthermore what a heavy Anadem can accomplish, just watch this. I'm gonna show you something even Prados and Cronin cannot do. The heavy attack of daggers consists of a plus sign double swipe. Imagine the hitbox being half a sphere. It covers almost your entire screen, including above and below you and your sides. Literally everything around me dies and because we have a .9 follow through, most of them still take majority of the damage the first enemy received. Even better, the double hit means anything killed by the first strike, which admittedly hits very hard even without the slash procs, because of the 150% base damage passive and massive base damage of the Anadem combined with the 12x heavy multiplier. But yeah, the enemies killed by the first hit will be dead by the second hit and cannot reduce the damage dealt to surviving enemies due to follow through. Basically, daggers are one of the best AoE mob clears for heavy attack builds and still very lethal for single target heavy setups. Though remember what I said about build diversity. The only difference between the light attack spam setup and this hybrid build is we dropped spring loaded blade for reflex coil. That's it. And obviously the amalgam of variants of organ shatter for faster 1 up at a tiny damage loss. It's a shame because you can't do wacky builds like the slam setup on Prados that actually has slam synergy on its evolution tree. Daggers actually have a pretty fast one up and this cuts it down to just 0 0.2 which is near instant. Very smooth feeling and spammable. For frame setups this is a generic gyre endurance build. It's not specific to this video but just know it is a muzzle flash setup so I can passively spam blades in a 31.8 meter radius while I'm busy slicing up enemies. It is in line of sight and goes straight through walls meaning the most hands-off and reliable blind ability in the game. Strike because it's needed to patch low attack speed of the dagger like I mentioned before alongside the evolution perk that grants 25%. Energize to sustain energy, but honestly it shouldn't be a problem since you won't be shield getting as much if everything is always blind, and muzzle flash will continue to pulse out by itself. Your 2 also has a massive suck range this way if you want to group enemies up for that. Your 4 still offers some light CC between blinds by proccing electric and chaining up to 26.5 meters away while your 3 being shitty is still enough to upkeep and you only need to cast once since it will most likely sit capped at 60 seconds constantly with the kill rate of Anadem can achieve. This setup is also meant to be used with the Decay Dragon Keep so that 2 casts of your Coal Horizon will fully regenerate all your shields or a single cast of your 4. That's about it, run no whatever companion you want, I still usually recommend a Panzer and this is my stock build for it. It has all the survivability it needs through devolution granting infinite lives, tech assault blocking lethal hits 60% at the time including when it tries to kill itself to save you from dying with martyr, viral quills to spread viral in the room for me, and radar with vacuum. And that's it, everything you need to know about the Anodem. It is essentially almost exclusively a DPS tool with very little actually useful utility to offer. Though it does have some utility for itself as a DPS weapon and makes it one of the best daggers to sit alongside Karist and Rakta. 
The ridiculous base damage and range on this with the extra damage is no joke. It takes the middle ground between Kratos and Cronin for DPS, though in my eyes it actually surpasses Cronin by having essentially equal real-time performance, but even more range and completely busted heavy attack setups as an option for AoE clear. The only letdown? Not the performance of the weapon itself, but rather some decisions DE made that appear to stifle creativity with the Incarnon Evolution system and the perks you have available. It's definitely got the short end and the stick and actually interesting perks, but if it's still this strong, that should say enough about the weapon. What do you think? If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I've tried my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible, like I've done with covering the Echoes of Zeroman update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. Do I miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.